Oh, we do spiders. Scorpions? I love the challenge. Centipedes? Centipedes are a speciality. The queen centipede. Bring her on. <laughs> The Bugs are back. Centipede on CD-ROM. Take on five all-new worlds or play classic style. Get your hands on Centipede for PC CD-ROM. Uh, maybe we could talk about this? <laughs> Welcome back to the Courtyard by Marriott Halftime Report at the Pit. Lobo Classic, Lamont Long, 32, New Mexico. No problem with Cornell. And in the Puerto Rico shootout, Xavier, after being upset by Pitt, a 74-61 winner over Colorado, James Posey, 21 points and 11 boards. We spoke of Xavier being upset by Pitt. Pitt trying to make it two in a row against top 10 opponents. Taking on Kentucky, and the Cats have had some shooting problems. Did not shoot the ball well from behind the arc against Colorado, just two of 22. Could they get it turned around against Pitt? Checking out the action from Puerto Rico. Vontigo coming. This guy finally healthy and playing very well for Ralph Willard. Good look inside from Cummings to Isaac Hawkins. Seven assists for Cummings on the day, but the game's out there. See it? Be it. Pit up by six at the break. In the second half, Wayne Turner. It's a little fancy. Dribbling in traffic has it taken away. So Vontigo's going to take it the other way. Stroke. Two of five from behind the arc. Pitt had a four-point lead at that point, but Tubby knew things weren't good. Vontigo Cummings now. Nobody stops the ball all the way to the cup. Two of his game-high 20. Kentucky falls 68 to 56. The final in that one. Pitt, 9 of 17 from 3. The Cats, 2 of 22. They've hit just 3 of their last 34. UCLA and Maryland, the Bruins, I'm not happy with the uniforms. I'll bet Coach Wooden's not happy with the uniforms. Maryland happy with that. LaRon Profit, only four points on the day, but that one was pretty. Maryland up by eight at the break. Second half, another UCLA turnover. Terrence Morris, the break to Francis, and then got it back to Morris. He had 22. More turnovers for UCLA, 24 of them on the game. This one coming here. Profit over his head. Francis, don't you very much. Maryland wins it by a count of 70 to 54. Morris is 22, matching a career high. So now that means Maryland and Pitt in the finals of the Puerto Rico shootout. And you can see that Saturday night right here on the network. Tip off at 8 o'clock Eastern time. Pitt and Maryland ought to be a good one. More ACC scores for you. Wake Forest barely surviving against Davidson. 59-58 the final. Robert O'Kelly with 24 to lead the Demon Deacons. Elsewhere, Big Island Invitational. Georgia Tech now 3-0. Three Three-point winner over New Orleans. Charleston Southern taking on North Carolina State. That's not in the same tournament. The Wolfpack in 93-57 winner. More on the Courtyard by Marriott Halftime Report coming. I'll see you. Hi, man. Me too. Me too. Ah, the credit card game. We've all played it. I'll go 5.9%. That an intro rate? Yeah. First, you get a great introductory rate, but then it goes up. So you'll raise us to 17.9% in six months? Yeah. But now, if you have good credit, you can win the credit card game. Let's make it interesting. Too rich for my blood. I'll call. With the 9.9% fixed rate Visa Platinum card from Capital One. Fixed? That's a great game. It's not an introductory rate. And with no annual fee, all the perks of Platinum and a low fixed rate, you may never have to switch cards again. Act now. Call 1-800-CAPITAL and start saving hundreds, even thousands of dollars a year. Call 1-800-CAPITAL. Apply today for the 9.9% fixed rate Visa Platinum from Capital One. In the credit card game, it's the winning card. Hey, you want real action? Turn on HBO. Because there's real life, and then there's the movies on HBO. Welcome back. Sport Guard by Marriott. Halftime report rolls on. College football is on the agenda for sports. Center. Ricky Williams might have just salted away that high. And Trey Wingo and Whit Watson have it all for you. Also, Albert Bell, does he finally have a home? They'll have the latest on that. And college football coming your way on the family of networks tomorrow. Virginia, Virginia Tech starts an afternoon. You see the next two games. We're going to get you back out to Alaska. Second half, Duke and Fresno coming.
My job is to compare products. And it's not often that I'm surprised. So when Head & Shoulders went up against the leading prescription brand, I expected the prescription to be better. But it isn't. A study proves Head & Shoulders is effective against dandruff. I found out there's a microscopic fungus associated with dandruff, and Head & Shoulders helps kill it. Helps stop flakes before they even start. Not even the expensive prescription works better. You may never see flakes again. I don't. ESPN's exclusive presentation of NCAA basketball is brought to you by the new Dodge. It's about change. Back in Alaska, a very entertaining, and you'd have to say a somewhat surprising first half as the undermanned Fresno State Bulldogs, not a very deep team, they're hanging in with the number one Duke Blue Devils. It is tied going to the second half. The question is why? Well, they've definitely done it. Fresno State has with their defense. They've been able to go out and contest the Duke perimeter players, force them to put it on the floor, force them to make some mistakes. On the offensive end, Fresno State's done a great job of taking care of the ball. As we take a look here, one of the key stats is the turnover situation. Two turnovers by Fresno State. They haven't turned it over in the face of that Duke pressure defense. Huge advantage on the boards by Duke, but it's been negated by Fresno State at the free throw line. Very aggressive game they've played so far. Trajan Langdon from here in Anchorage had an outstanding shooting night last night against Notre Dame. You cannot say the same thing to this point tonight. Four made, nine missed, one of seven from three-point range. I don't think he's forced that many shots. He's just cold. Well, he's cold, and, and a lot of that is the direct result of the pressure that Fresno State has put. He's had to take some shots with a hand in his face, with people having their hands up. As a team, Duke just can't get anything going from the perimeter after a, an unbelievable shooting night against the Irish last night. And Fresno State will look to take the lead as we begin play in the second half. The only player in the game with three fouls is Deuce Corey McGetty. And if Jerry Tarkanian sat down Corey Alexander and told him not to shoot anymore, and Alexander wasn't listening because he didn't wait long to get it going in the second half. And he's now just two of 11 from the floor with a number of poor decisions. Avery, great look for Burgess and a foul. Well, the strategy of making Duke put it on the floor and penetrate, testing Avery's ability to make the play, backfired at least on that play you look at him here in the paint splits the defenders right there and finds Burgess who's gone up strong again that weight program that he went on this past summer is paying dividends huge night so far for Burgess and I'll tell you for a couple of point guards and Avery and Heron who are really getting used to the pass first score second mentality these two guys are doing a nice job handling the offense well they're both excellent basketball players. They're unselfish. They have an understanding of what it takes to win. So they can make the jump. Aaron into the lane, and he dumps it off for Eli. Melvin Eli over Burgess. One-point game. Eli's been taking a page out of Elton Brand's notes right there. Again, under control, recognizing the defense. Eli with a dozen. Here's Brand cut off on the baseline. One of the things we haven't even come close to talking about tonight is the 45-second shot clock, which is in effect. It just hasn't been a factor. Langdon tried to muscle his way in, and he has a great look underneath for Carowell. Well, what's happening right now is the Duke offensive players are getting behind the Fresno State defense. So when the penetration comes, Fresno State's front line steps up, and the Duke guy's on the baseline just waiting for the pass. Courtney Alexander finally gets one to go down, and Fresno State back within one. Burgess. Off for Brand. Chris Burgess might be having the game of his career. Mike Krzyzewski might have found his backup point guard. <laughs> Nice play, though, by the big side. Burgess has nine points, 13 rebounds, and three assists. Heron gets it to fall. Back and forth they go, just as they started off tonight. Although the shooting has not been really good for either team, the pace has been excellent. Langdon for three. Long rebound, and Langdon's got it. Play on. Here's 
Burgess again trying to look inside for Brand, and it's off Elton Brand back over to Fresno State. Good thought by Burgess. Pass just didn't come up for Brand, but you got to like the way Burgess is playing right now with a little more abandon. He's recognizing he's got some skills. Now's the time to use it, and that's just a question of confidence. Burgess is showing it right now. And again, he is starting and playing because Shane Battier is missing tonight's game with a stomach virus. They hope to have Battier back for the morning. Nice look. Give and go. Abney, no. Misses the tip as well. Nice job, though, by Eli. Took the double team, recognized the cutter. Just got to convert. Avery, wide open three. Long rebound again, and Heron's got it. Numbers for the Bulldogs. Three on two. Alexander and Fresno State has taken the lead. That's what happens when we talked about with both teams. You take a quick shot, you don't have your floor covered in rotation. And both of these teams are very good in transition, especially with Heron running the show on one end and Avery on the other. Burgess again puts it on the floor. Langdon open. Finally, Trajan Langdon. You just can't say enough about Chris Burgess forcing the issue right now, making Eli guard him putting it on the floor, drawing the defense in, and finding the open man. What a play by Burgess. He is doing it at both ends tonight. Duke on the run. Avery, nice hesitation, and Burgess rewarded for running the floor. Just stuck his hand up looking to try to get a breather here, but he's done a yeoman's job in the last couple of minutes. Alexander just a little beyond his reach. He had to overextend a bit. Carowell, the pull-up jumper. Roberson up for the rebound. He and Burgess battling. And I'll tell you, Chris Burgess is one fired up Blue Devil right now. And I'll tell you, what caused that was Burgess running right to the spot on the weak side of the board. We take a look here on the penetration by Avery. Draws Heron to him, and no one rotates back. That was Terrence Roberson's responsibility. He never got back. No to screen. Burgess with a very big night. Double-double already. As does Elton Brand. Avery's got seven assists as he misses the three-pointer. Heron, the lob, and there's Domzolski with maybe the play of the game to get it back, steal it, and keep it in balance. Domzolski just coming in for Burgess. Another great feed from Avery, and this time Brand slams it home. Well, Duke, as we can now see, has made the adjustment, recognizing Fresno State is going to get up on him. They're going to draw the defenses, make the defense shift a little bit, explore it, and then find some open people. Four rotation by Fresno State in their defense. Duke by six, another miss for Alexander, and Domzalski clears. Avery with the ball has just one point tonight, but he's got eight assists. Avery's got three points tonight. Well, that time he had to pull a little bit out of his trick bag. <laughs> That's his favorite move. Won't go down, knocked away. Holcomb over Carowell and a foul as well. That really stems the tie. They needed that one. Both these teams playing a blistering pace right now. It's a question of who's going to recognize the proper time to kind of slow it down a little bit, get some balance on their floor. Because if they put the quick shots up, they're just going to turn into converted baskets on the other end. Changes for both teams. Burgess is back in. Brand's going to get a rest. Demetrius Porter has come to the game. At the point for Fresno State. So Heron will slide over to the two-guard spot. Alexander still in there. So really a three-guard look right now for the Bulldogs. Holcomb at the line. Cannot convert. For the minefield for Fresno State. Here's McGanny. Oh boy, he missed it. He was exploding down the floor, but he missed the jam. You kind of got to like the effort, though. That's what you have to do. When you got that athletic ability and you're going strong to the basket, make it count. Just got to put it down. They got a timeout on the floor with a Duke leading by six. Good D by Domzalski. And at the other end, Brand, the easy two. Ah, the possibility Dodge Caravan opens up. It's a cabin in the woods, complete with heated power recliners. It's your own private ski lodge, or your workshop for building one. It's your place in the sun, complete with guest room and breezeway. Dodge Caravan, the world's most popular home away from home. Now get up to $1,000 cash allowance on Dodge Caravan. Big Bob's exterminating. 
spiders? Oh, we do spiders. Scorpions? I love the challenge. Centipedes? Centipedes are a speciality. The queen centipede. Bring her on. <laughs> The Buds are back. Centipede on CD-ROM. Take on five all-new worlds or play classic style. Get your hands on Centipede for PC CD-ROM. Uh, maybe we could talk about this? <laughs> you guys are in here again? I can't believe this. You're always in here nursing your injuries. I have never seen such a group of cream pop in my life. This is football. I need guys that can play. Man, I thought he'd never leave. With a great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. Hot dog, anyone? In the second half, Duke's done a better job offensively, getting some better looks at the basket. Really. Unfortunately for Fresno State, though, they haven't been able to cover in rotation as well as they did in the first half, as we see Langdon bury a three with Roberson getting there a little bit too late. The key to the first of the second half right now for Duke is their ability to continue to attack the basket aggressively, beat Fresno State, and then catch them in rotation, finding some guys with some easy shots underneath. They didn't have that luxury in the first half. It was tied at the half. Duke's gone seven of 11 from the floor in the second half. A lot of layups within those seven field goals. And that includes also the missed dunk by McGetty. A clear look. Steal by Avery. Here's McGetty again. And he's fouled hard by Alexander. And Avery has done a little bit of everything in tonight's game. And I'll tell you, Duke has stepped up their defense as well. They're beginning to swarm again. Take a look here. Getting himself into trouble is Demetrius Porter. Nice job by Courtney Alexander to hustle back, make McGetty earn it on the line. Back comes Elton Brand, and out goes Domzowski. And, and one of the problems with Fresno State, we talked about them being late in their rotation, is I just have to believe that they're tired right now, particularly the guys on the front line, battling people like Elton Brand, Domzowski, and Burgess this whole game. They're starting to become worn down, and it really shows in foot more than anything else. Duke has outscored Fresno State 18 to 10 in the second half. Avery with another steal. And a good look ahead. Here's McGetty again. We saw last night that this freshman from Bellwood, Illinois, can score in bunches. He is averaging 15 points per game in 20 minutes per game. You got to give the credit to William Avery that time. He stymied Chris Heron getting his hands up in the passing lane, applying some pressure that he didn't do the first time. You take a look here. He's up now. Again, good anticipation starts the break. Good court vision. That's the guy you want to get it to. You want to finish, give it to McGetty. Yeah, miss dunk aside because that's really a clue. He can run the floor and finish like nobody's business. Third foul committed by Avery. The turnover story has changed after the Bulldogs did a great job in the first half. It could be a factor right there. William Avery's coming on the bench with three fouls. Langs going to land the point now for Duke against Heron. 10-point lead, Roberson, of course, is a shot, and Brand has another rebound. It is 14. The reason it may be a factor is because, again, Avery's the one who's been making the penetration and finding people. Heron on the run. Three on two, Heron hangs and misses the shot, but he'll shoot a couple. Bulldogs can get down the floor when they put their mind to it as well. Yeah, they're getting there, then they're getting into the paint where they want to be, just haven't been able to finish. Heron has looked all right despite a bum ankle that he twisted in last night's game against Alaska Anchor. Watch Heron bear down with the crossover and force Langdon to have to shift his defensive position. He kind of would like to see Heron attack the basket a little more instead of that loss, but I think he's afraid of drawing the offensive foul where Langdon was pretty much poised to do it. Carowell back in for McGay. Heron trying to make it two of two from the line, something Fresno State just hasn't been able to do much in this tournament. They have shot poorly from the line. They also have shot poorly from three-point range, which is not like them. They have shot poorly from outside all season, and last year they were pretty good from out there. Burgess showing all kinds of confidence here tonight. He is having a huge night with 13 points and 14 rebounds. 
Heron at the other end gets the floater to go. And that's what I'm talking about. Attack the basket. None of this lost in the ball over. Chris Heron's got enough hops and enough strength to go right at it. 18 for Heron. He's the high scorer in this game. Brand would be much smaller. Abney on him. Tries to muscle his way in. Here comes Fresno State. Two on one. Alexander and Holcomb, the pull-up by Alexander will drop. <laughs> and if I'm Tark, I'm happy he put that one down because he got a two-on-one. You never want to settle for a jump shot on a two-on-one break. That's a layup. Alexander, 6 of 16 tonight, but he has made four of his last six. He's had a much better second half. And it was a 10-point lead. is now down to six. Near steal by Holcomb. He'll tie up James. And here's where the loss of Avery for Duke has an effect on their offense. They haven't been smooth enough right now. They've had to move the ball. And here he comes back again. Talk about the rotation. Here you see Roberson gambling, and it's always a second pass. When you catch a defense in rotation, you make the second pass. Nice job to get the ball to Burgess on the baseline. Meanwhile, Fresno State's got the ball back, down only six. Avery, as Len mentioned, back in the game for the Blue Devils at the points. So that settles him down a little bit. Cameron looking for a hole, gets by Avery, gets inside. Everything but the finish, and a foul on the Bulldogs. But again, instead of the loft, he's going to the basket. Wasn't fortunate enough to draw the foul that time. But he's sending a message at this point in time. Hopefully it's communicated to his teammates. You've got to attack the basket when you're going to the hole. He kind of lost the handle on that. Third foul on Larry Abney brings the Blue Devils back the other way. 60-54. to 54. Been a great game. Langdon, another three-point attempt, and yes. And they're just so much more comfortable with Avery handling the ball. Langdon knows what he has to do to get open as opposed to distributing the ball and then trying to find a way to get back into the offense. 15 for Langdon. Double team down low, Abney, and the foul is called. There is a whole lot of college football action to come your way tomorrow on ESPN and ESPN2. It all begins with College Game Day, college football show of record at 11 a.m. Eastern on ESPN. Then at noon Eastern on ESPN, number 15 of Virginia, taking on number 19 of Virginia Tech. 3.30 in the afternoon over on ESPN2, number 2, Tennessee, taking on Vanderbilt. And then later on tomorrow night in Michigan at Hawaii. One time. One time. The bane of their existence. Fresno State on the free throw line. It seems as everyone but Chris Heron has had difficulty in putting down two free throws. And again, lost opportunity, particularly when you're trying to come back. 14 of 22, 64%. The Bulldogs from the line tonight, they're down eight. Heron and Avery, both point guards, have had terrific games tonight. Gonzalski back in there for Duke. Burgess getting a rest. Now Avery goes around. Eli puts it into another gear. Finds Gonzalski. Langdon open again. Harrowell looking for the rebound. Three Blue Devils were in there for it, but it comes free to Eli. Second pass got to the open man. Alexander elevates and hits. He's now 7 of 17. He's got 17 points. The Courtney Alexander is so much smoother in the flow. You can take those shots when you're in the flow of the offense. But when you're in a half-court set looking for a better shot, it just doesn't do you any good to pop out 20 feet and lost one. He averages about 20 shots a game. Langdon, this three-pointer, rattles in. Langdon's got 18, and that's his fourth three. How does the best shooter on the team get so many open looks? Alexander again with a strong rebound of Brand and Alexander down and late getting back into the play. Nice job by Gonzalski to change Alexander's shot. Carowell for three. Brand gets it. And that time Brand just pulled Abney out of the way. Langdon floats in for two. Trajan Langdon starting to take over. He's got 20 points for the second night in a row. As well as the front line for Duke. Again, making room for themselves crash on the board. Chris Heron not about to let him get away though. A huge night for him. 21 points for Heron. They have given Heron a two-pointer, I believe, on that last shot, so make it 68 to 60. 
as Fresno State tries to hang in with the number one team in the country. Major Langdon has heated up here in the Great White North. Warning, this film contains nudity, Excellent. death, and she's dead. murder, it happens all the time, violence, oh god I can take, and other very bad things. Rated R, now playing at theaters everywhere. What sort of road do you drive on? If it's straight, you'll want a multi-valve V6 and auto stick transmission to make it more interesting. If it's a curvy one, you'll want anti-lock brakes and speed sensitive power steering to help you negotiate it. If it's rough, you'll want a double wishbone suspension to help tame it. And if you want it all, you'll end up here. Dodge Stratus. Starts at 14815, 18495, impressively equipped. It has arrived. The day when you stop listening to the tales of other lives lived and begin the odyssey that will be your story. When you find the destiny to which you were born, all you need to bring with you is your honor, your courage, and your commitment. It's your journey. Make it a good one. Call 1-800-USA-NAVY. Let the journey begin. If you're going to create electricity, use it. The Seiko Kinetic Watch, electrically charged every time you move your body. Back in Anchorage, Dan Schulman, Len Elmore with you. Eight-point lead for Duke. We showed you one of the earlier matchups between a Coach K and the Shark. This is the second matchup, the most recent matchup between Mike Krzyzewski and Jerry Tarkanian. Of course, the Shark was back in UNLV. This is 1991 National Semifinal. UNLV comes in 34-0. Anderson Hunt's desperation three won't go. And Bobby Hurley and the Duke Blue Devils went on to win their first of two consecutive national championships. Pretty good team. Hurley, Hill, Leitner. Boy, the early 90s, those two games between Vegas and Duke there, you couldn't find more talented teams than those two teams. Were this and still, you have the striking contrast in the approach to the game. That, in those years, UNLV, much of a power team, loved to run, had a couple of guys who could fill it up from the outside, but certainly LJ. And Duke just a much more balanced team. Double team on a brand. Tip back up by Burgess No. And here comes Fresno State. Down only eight with just over ten minutes to play. Who would have guessed? Heron, the shot's a little flat. It's still alive under the basket. And Duke comes out with it. And Chris Heron that time uncharacteristically forces the issue. Not a good decision by Chris Heron. He has had the hot hand recently, as Langdon has had the hot hand for Duke. Parallel forced to go to the left hand. Brand of the follow and of the bucket. Just too much size down low between Brand and Burgess. And, and particularly, both of the big guys, Brand and Burgess, have done a great job of not so much looking for the pass, but going to the weak side of the basket and positioning himself. Look at Brand right now. Now, he's anchored right on the weak side, getting position. He's not worried about looking for the ball to be thrown to him. He's looking for it off the board. And for a lot of you big guys, young big guys watching this game, once you got a shooter ready to shoot and you recognize it, get to the weak side of the board and establish yourself. There are an awful lot of offensive rebounds coming off. I know a few guys have made a living doing that. President <laughs> <laughs> included. Elton Brand is having a huge night. You know, 17 points, 17 rebounds. When you play with guys like John Lucas and Tommy Millen back in the 70s, who love to launch it. It's the only way you can get a chance <laughs> to, to sniff a couple of bats. You, know, you big guys always complaining about never getting the ball. 18 rebounds for Elton Brand. And let's not forget that Chris Burgess has 15. Burgess has done a nice job of methodically stretching this lead and they've done it with offensive rebounding they've done it off the dribble playing good deep. Elton Brand is starting to take over Fresno State trying to deny Duke their three-pointers and Brand is running wild inside 13 point lead for the Blue Devils after this game was tied at the half Holcomb left alone will put it up this time the rebounder comes to Langdon but a foul Talk about Elton Brand getting anchored. Here he gets a pick. He comes across the lane. Nice job. You see the way his left foot pointed to the basket. 
pretty much didn't have his shoulders parallel to the passer, but had at least one foot in the lane. When you get one to two feet in the paint as a big man, good things are going to happen for you. 9.02 to play, and Duke up 13. Now to stay undefeated, the winner of this game gets Cincinnati in the championship game tomorrow night here in Alaska. It was tied at the half at 38. Fresno State has played a very tough, they're not nearly as deep as Duke, but they've done an outstanding job to stay in this game. But recently, Duke's size and strength inside has taken over with Brand and Burgess combining for 32 points and 33 rebounds. And Sherman, Len Elmer with you at sold out Sullivan Arena, where Alaska is the adopted home team because Trajan Langdon is from Anchorage. And they have enjoyed Langdon's work in two games so far in this tournament. Time now to take a look at the ESPN.com news and notes. The top 25 fan poll. Log on and take part in ESPN.com's college basketball top 25 fan poll. Also, live chat with Digger Phelps Tuesday night from the grade 8 in Chicago. One shot. No, another rebound for Brand. Unbelievable. 19 rebounds for Elton Brand. Burgess. Boy, that would have capped off his night. Just showing off a little bit. Chris Burgess getting out and getting loose. It's good to see because this is a talented guy that really didn't have a good year last year. He's come back strong right now, doing the things that everyone knew he was capable of doing. Shamario Richard in at the point now for Fresno State. Heron's still in there as well. Melvin Eli's had trouble getting on track. Can't find a bunch of space down there. He has the potential to put up some big numbers. Heron, an NBA three. And he slaps the floor. He's pumped up. He's trying to get his teammates back into it as they're back within 10. It's going to be a question of defense for Fresno State. As we said, we know they can score. The question is, can they stop that big front line of Duke right now that's been doing the damage? Aaron with 24. Avery cut off. Gets it back from Burgess. Still plenty of time to shoot. Nice battle inside between Holcomb and Elton Brand. Holcomb doing a nice job of fronting Brand so that there's no direct entry for Now we've seen Avery distribute the ball beautifully tonight. Now we see him do really what he's used to doing. That's getting to the basket. Aaron trying to fight through some screens to get open. Puts it on the floor. Spinning into the lane. Yes! What a night for Heron. He's got 26. Well, Chris Heron, we talked about him being a converted point guard, but there are situations where you have to take over. And for his team, that's what he's trying to do, lead him to the promised land. He needs some help there. Here goes Avery around the Burgess screen. Extra pass, open man, Carowell. Talking about rotation, it's the second pass. He was so cold in the first half. They have Passed the ball and shot the ball much better here in the second half. Five assists for Burgess to go with the 15 rebounds with the 13 points. Holcomb from 15, another rebound for Burgess. And the problem with Fresno State is they don't have enough offensive players out there on the floor. Particularly guys who can create for themselves. You got Heron, but Roberson and, and Eli need some help. Sanders getting set to check back in. Roberson's been very quiet recently. Knocked away by Eli, but Brand still gets it, and then he's hacked. Well, that play right there really illustrates the fatigue factor. Eli does a nice job of getting his hand in the passing lane, but he doesn't have the energy to follow it up, and you can see him bent over right now. You know that he's winded, and when you got to battle a big guy like Brand, it's going to take a lot out of him. They're trying to stay close with number one Duke, but the lead is up to a dozen. If I said you could get your hair back free, get up to 65% off major hotels, plus save as much as $180 on American Airlines, you'd probably think I was kidding. Well, guess what? I'm not kidding. We're not about drugs or surgery. We're about adding real hair in with your own. So call 1-800-HAIR-CLUB now for your free brochure. Free hair, and for limited time, up to 65% off major hotels and up to $180 off American Airlines. Just prepay for a club plan. And the hair is free. The roads are jam-packed around the mall tonight. No way, lady, that's my spot. Uh, first. I have been waiting in line. It's my spot. Goodbye. Now there's an easier way to shop. Value America. The best brands at the best prices. Like a printer, scanner, and IBM PC, just $10.99. And the Palm 3 organizer from 3Com, just $3.49.
Holiday shopping. Done. Good. My turn. ValueAmerica.com. Holiday shopping. The smart way. This Sunday night, the Denver Broncos against the San Diego Chargers. It's an ESPN Sunday night football war. Which Bronco? You know, it's a Bronco that uh, gets the migraines. He doesn't get them anymore because he drinks orange juice. He drinks orange juice. Hey. It has nothing to do with orange juice. It has everything to do with orange juice. ESPN Sunday Night Football. The Broncos against the Chargers. Have any of you guys ever tried an orange Julius? Because they're really delicious. And with Duke leading 77 to 65, we'll take a look at the problems Melvin Eli has had with Elton Brand. Brand gets good position in the paint. Eli now comes up on top in pretty good position defensively but not enough energy to follow the deflection and then he's not moving his feet he's using his hands that's a sure sign of fatigue and when you've got a battle of 260 pound dancing bear like that eventually <laughs> it's going to wear you down and one of the problems is larry abney who is probably fresno state's best rebounder and another inside player is in foul trouble so he hasn't been in there as much as jerry tarkanian would like he brings him back into the game now along with courtney alexander Chris Heron getting what is sure to be a brief rest for Fresno State. Heron's got 26 points. Duke's up a dozen with 6.39 to play. Avery, Burgess, Brand, Carowell, and Langdon, the starting five on the floor for the Blue Devils. Fresno looking to change defense just a little bit. Actually, not as much during the game as I thought they would. Right now, to set up in a 2-3 zone. Duke has decided to try to pull him out of it just to stand out there and wait. And the crowd not really happy with this decision by Duke to stand out there and wait. And they took 25 seconds off the clock. Remember, it's a 45 here in this game. And this is probably the way Mike Krzyzewski wants to slow his team's tempo down a little bit, have them make the defenses come to them, something they didn't do last year and wound up losing a number of double-digit leads. Alexander gets free. Nobody found him. Back to a 12-point game. At the other end, Elton Brand just creates so much space for himself in the lane. When you use your shoulders, you use your hips, as a good big man does, you are going to get enough room to maneuver. The Bulldogs have come out of the zone. Langdon spinning with nowhere to go. Five and a half to play. Avery has it knocked away. Carwell saves it. Plenty of time on the shot clock. Good job by Avery to reset. Once again, there's no need to force. You've got a 12-point lead. You make the defense come to you. Take what they give you. Give and go. Carowell the finish. Pretty. All right, let's go. Again, good recognition. Well schooled with regard to having the killer instinct. Duke right now poised to put Fresno State away. Again, it's by ball movement. Not rushing, being quick, but not in a hurry, and then taking what the defense gives. Take a look here on the cutter, the double team down the brand, and a nice job by Carowell to cut to the hole. Abney didn't stay in the game long. That's his fifth foul. Not much of a score, but a presence inside. Aaron's come back into the game in a smaller lineup. Right now for Fresno State, you really could classify three of the players on the floor as guards and a fourth roberson is a forward but he plays almost entirely on the perimeter well it's an absolute contrast to what duke offers duke has a ton of big guys who just coming at keep coming at you in waves and fresno state big people are premium aaron trying to post up on avery different look roberson into the lane got it to go but a pretty quiet night for roberson to give him nine points right now. came out hot in the first half putting it on the floor creating some opportunities for himself and others averages 13 fresno state down 12 less than five to play alexander's a tough defense but carowell's a pretty good ball handle but with this lineup I would hope that Duke would continue to get the ball in the post as they did with Burgess. Spread the floor and utilize that size advantage. By the same token, Fresno State's going to have to come down and start finding ways to utilize their quickness on the perimeter, make the big guys come out and guard. Burgess's confidence appears to be at an all-time high right now, both in his play and his demeanor on the court. He is as vocal and, and confident as, he, as he's ever been. 
The Bulldogs have been a balanced team with all five starters scoring in double figures this year, but as you can see, they're not deep. They just don't get much at all from the bench. No, and they've had a lot of guys that they were depending upon uh, not here because of problems, academic problems and otherwise. So, I mean, they're shorthanded. There's no question about it. But when you saw Abney come off the come off the floor and sit down after fouling out and he hit his head uh, in his shirt, there's really nothing that they have to be ashamed about. I'm talking about Fresno State. They came out here and battled Duke, gave them all that they could handle, and really played a superlative floor game. The problem was, from a physical standpoint, Duke just too big, too strong, and too smart to let that happen over a 40-minute span. Over 20 minutes, it was all even, tied at 38 at halftime, but Duke now leads by 14 and looking more and more like the team that'll oppose Cincinnati in the championship game tomorrow. There's a good unselfish play by Alexander and he finds Eli for an easy dunk. Courtney Alexander has a lot of skill. It's just going to be a question of judgment and I guess he'll learn as time goes on. He can be effective without having to shoot the ball every time. Bulldogs have a steal. Shamario Richard into the front court. The lob and Alexander for two more. Fresno State stepping up the pressure right now, something we didn't see him do at all in the first half. And a foul committed by Heron, and that's fouling the wrong guy. We're putting the ACC's all-time leading free throw shooter at the line. Unfortunately, though, Chris Heron has to gamble right now, as do the rest of the Fresno State players on the floor. They're not big enough to come down and, and to really contest inside, so they've got to create some opportunities, as I said before, with their quickness, and the way they're going to do it is pressure in the backcourt. In his career, Trajan Langdon is nearly a 90% a free throw shooter, although he did miss one last night. <laughs> Trying to get the lead back to a dozen with under four minutes to play. Langdon will do just that. Duke with a lead, but Fresno State not going quietly. They're down 12, 3.58 to play. Hey, Mr. Internet Wonderboy. What? Over here, here, over here. You think you got it all, don't you? Well, but there's just tiny little voice inside saying there's got to be something new, something that makes you want to stand up and say, Yeah, baby, this is what I need. Yeah. Here it is. New Pepsi One. Massive cola taste, only one calorie. It's got it all. And you know what it's saying to you, don't you? No. Put down your mouth and curl up with me, baby, because I'm all you ever need. I want that. You want that. I want that. He wants that. Now you got it all, baby. Oh! New Pepsi One. Da, 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 da. He's from New York. You show me. American Weekend Duffel Bag. Just $22 with any $43 Tommy fragrance purchase. Available at fine stores. At the new Dodge, we're full of ideas. Example, a $700 plus package packed with ideas like power locks, power windows, heated power mirrors, and more at no extra charge on the roomy cab forward Dodge Stratus. Add the subtraction of $1,000 cash allowance you have the best idea of all. Less money, more Stratus. Now select the cash allowance or low 1.9 financing on Stratus. ESPN's exclusive presentation of NCAA basketball is brought to you by De Beers, the world's diamond experts since 1888. Great Alaska shootout, and I'll tell you, the folks who come out here, they had an awfully good time. The best get-up every night, so. yeah. <laughs> the best get-up every night gets to sit down on a green couch down at the corner front row seats that get brought down from the rafters, and it doesn't take much to get these folks to do this. The green and gold, obviously, the colors of Alaska Anchorage, a team that earlier today, we should have mentioned, defeated Notre Dame. UAA picking up its 20th win in 21 years at this tournament. I don't think it's classified as a surprise anymore. It's coming, it's coming. Aaron tries a, an awful lot of spin on that shot to get it to go down. It wouldn't. Didn't use enough patience that time. He had a cutter breaking open for a jump shot, but Chris Aaron rushed the situation. And another foul. 
this will be what Fresno State has to resort to as they gamble. But the problem is, if Langdon's got the ball, it's almost an automatic two. So I think on the other end of the offensive end, there's obviously real anxiety on the part of Fresno State and particularly Chris Heron. You know, doesn't feel that he can wait for guys to break open and he wants to take him too much upon himself. You know, exercise pretty good judgment throughout the game, but at this point, when they see it slipping away, this is the time to be a little more disciplined and try to stay within the system unless you have an opening. Fourth foul on Courtney Alexander and Langdon back to the line again. There are the numbers at the line. He is as close to automatic as you will find. And he's having a big shootout in front of all his family and friends. 20 points last night, 24 tonight. That's it. Alexander going to work. Oh, scoop shot. <laughs> and it's not as if there isn't any other talent on the floor. He's got to draw a foul. Courtney Alexander has the ability to do that. That should be the fifth foul committed by Alexander. There's more basketball coming your way tomorrow. Surprising Pittsburgh taking on number five, Maryland. Pitt has already knocked off Xavier and Kentucky. And then Len and I will be back for the championship game at midnight Eastern Cincinnati against the winner of this game. And with Duke leading by 14, it looks like it'll be Cincinnati and Duke, number 14 and number one. Bob Huggins' Bearcats have not played particularly well in this tournament in defeating Southern Utah and Iowa State, but nevertheless, they're headed to the championship game. Well, it, it kind of shows you how much of a complete team Duke is because here Fresno State matched them with quickness, but not with a front line. I think Cincinnati has a big, strong front line. I mean, all those guys are benching 300 or more, so they're going to be able to compete with Duke's front line, but whether they have the quickness and the skill in the backcourt remains to be seen. Another three-pointer for Chris Heron. That one was a bomb, and he's got 29 points. There are some huge individual numbers being put up by players on both teams tonight. Chris Burgess and Elton Brand have had monster games inside. William Avery's got 11 assists. That's a career high. And here Duke spreading the floor again. It's making the defense extend itself, but you can't make mistakes like that. And you know Avery's going to hear about it. Film session time. Demetrius Porter into the game. Shamario Richard with the jumper. And it's an 11-point game. It has been a pretty gutty effort by Fresno State tonight, regardless of the outcome. And the idea of Duke spreading the floor in the half court is an exercise in trying to put a team away. And you just can't afford a silly mistake where Avery's trying to go behind his back. That's what Mike is telling us right now. We don't need the fancy stuff. Just make the play. Some of the career highs that have been set tonight by the Blue Devils. Brand and Burgess in rebounds. Avery in assists. And this is another note. Burgess in assists as well. Chris Burgess has 16 rebounds, 6 assists, and 15 points. But at times, he looks as sweet as Avery going down the lane, kicking it out to the jump shooter. A little more applause before you go. He's had a great night. Lang going to hit some both. See you, Corey. Farewell, will pose some problems for Heron. He gets inside off for Eli. He's showing his feet a little bit, but still connects. And now Langdon with the ball in his hands. He presents so many problems. Under two minutes to play, and it looks like Duke will stay undefeated and move on to face Cincinnati tomorrow night. Better track to the steal. No call on the foul as he bumped into Carroll. Avery gets inside again and draws the contact. Interesting development out front. I think that Fresno State was about two seconds away from getting, actually one second away from getting a five-second call on Avery, but then the double team came and pretty much bailed him out. Sometimes you have to be cognizant of those types of situations and not extend yourself too much. Let the game work in your favor. Let the rules work in your favor. Duke by 11, Avery at the line. Be sure and stay tuned. Following the game for Sports Center, Trey Wingo and Whit Watson will update today's top stories. A record day for Ricky Williams. An entertaining NIT championship game between Carolina and Stanford. And is Albert Bell going to take his act to Camden Yards? Oh, as a Yankee fan, I don't know if I like that. Get down, get down, Aaron gets inside and has it blocked by Brand. 
And you don't, you don't think of Elton Brand as a shot blocker, but he's got the long arms and the discipline in, in his leap to be able to get some of the opportunity. 21 rebounds for Brand, tying a great Alaska shootout record. Lines are wide open, but no need to put up a shot now. Fresno State will play Iowa State for third place, and Duke and Cincinnati will play for the championship on ESPN at a midnight Eastern tomorrow. Exactly a minute to play. Well, this is a good exercise for Mike Krzyzewski's Blue Devils, particularly with the fact that they were faced with a challenge. People getting up in their face with a challenge that they haven't seen thus far, and it's good preparation to play at Cincinnati. They'd like to form you with their full court pressure. Timeout on the floor. Less than a minute to go. Duke up 13. EA Sports presents Tiger versus Cyber Tiger. Hey, Tiger. You ever think about caddying? Don't make me come over there. Step aside. It's combo time. Combo? Check it out. Get him. Oh, that combo. Tiger Woods, 99. PGA Tour Golf. Beat him or beat him. EA Sports. It's in the game. The Duke Blue Devils were tested tonight, tied at 38 at halftime with underdog Fresno State, but they're now up 13 with under a minute to go. Another upset, if you want to call it that, for the Division II host school, Alaska Anchorage. This is their year, really. The biggest games they play come at this tournament. They need it overtime, but they beat Notre Dame 88-82. to Jim Hajdukovic, an Alaska native with a very big night. Hajdukovic, coincidentally, was at Fresno State. But when Jerry Tarkanian got there, Hajdukovic was let go, as it were, and came up to UAA. Aaron's three-pointer way long. Saves and almost up and under through the through the basket by Roberson. And then Cincinnati defeating Iowa State, 60 to 52 to move to the championship game. St. Mary's also defeating Southern Utah earlier today in the consolation round. Brand is looking for help. Shot clock turned off. Out of bounds to Fresno State. Well, I'll tell you. In this type of game, we talked about the learning experience for the Duke Blue Devils. Fresno State certainly recognizes that they can compete when they get into that whack schedule. You know, they should understand that they've got the guys that can go out there and play with the likes of Utah and New Mexico, et cetera. Aaron off for Richard. Three-pointer. Oh, Eli, the follow, Duke won't contest in the final few seconds of this game as the Blue Devils will remain undefeated and move on to the championship game tomorrow night at Cincinnati led by Trajan Langdon's 26 points and a huge night's inside for Brandon Burgess Duke heads into the championship game well in the championship game tomorrow folks you better tune in it's going to be a nice physical game front line of Cincinnati big and strong the matchup with Duke and also outside a lot of pressure we'll see if Duke is able to adjust from a game like this and continue to beat people off the dribble and create opportunities. Great night for Chris Heron and for Fresno State, but too many weapons for Duke. Final score, Duke 93, Fresno State 82. Sports Center is next for Len Elmore and our entire ESPN crew. I'm Dan Schulman. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Sports Center is next. Will she say, I love it? You shouldn't have. It's just what I wanted. Or will she say, nothing at all? The Diamond Solitaire Necklace. This Christmas goes straight for the heart. A diamond is forever. De Beers. Coming up on SportsCenter, we'll help you find that perfect holiday gift. The man who has everything adds another record. Arizona State gets into the spirit of sharing. The Pitt Panthers continue to take, take, take from the opposition, while Carolina learns the art of the return. Coach K and the Shark renew a rivalry north of the border. Has one of baseball's best sluggers found a new home for the holidays? On the ice, Mike Madano makes the most of his gifts. Peter Nedved learns it's better to give than to receive. John Cullen hangs it up, content with what he has. 
In the two-minute drill, Chris Berman examines a close race in the AFC East. And we'll preview the Skins game. Can Marco Mira continue his dream season? All this and more on SportsCenter next. It's worth the wait. Hi there, and welcome to the best little sports program in all the land, one foot away from Trey Wingo. I'm Whit Watson. He measured, and we clearly are the men in black. Coming up on this program, we put a wrap on the preseason NIT. A record's wrapped up in Texas, but we start with, or perhaps, the wrapping up of a big baseball present for Baltimore named Bell. A big gift indeed. Well, the details are sketchy, and nobody's talking publicly yet, but the Washington Post is reporting that the Baltimore Orioles have essentially come to terms with free agent outfielder Albert Bell. The deal is believed to be for five years and in the neighborhood of $65 million. Bell has averaged 44 home runs and 136 RBI over his last four controversial seasons. He took an out clause in his five-year $55 million deal with the White Sox to become a free agent. Bell was wooed by the Yankees as well, but they dropped out after they re-signed Bernie Williams. Well, Jeff Hornacek is indeed the idol of many a basketball player. He's the dream of every gym rat in America, the guy who went from a walk-on at Iowa State to NBA starter. Would you believe his college football equivalent just might be Ricky Williams? Technically, the Longhorn star is a walk-on. The money he received from playing minor league baseball with the Phillies prohibits him from using a scholarship at Texas. On Saturday, the walk-on tried to walk away with the career-rushing record in Division 1A. Ricky stepped onto the field looking to break Tony Dorsett's record. 63 yards short to start the afternoon. Tony Dorsett on hand, of course. Gomez. Dorsett's name now expunged at the hands of Emmett Smith. But Dorsett cheered as a good sport. Ten and gets inside the 20-yard line. Late fourth quarter, 10 picks left. Stockton, who had missed two kicks in this game earlier from 24 yards away. It's a chip shot. It's a game winner. Ricky Williams waves the towel as Texas wins the game. 44 carries, 259 yards, and a career rushing mark, 6,279 yards. The loss also ends the Aggies' 10-game winning streak. His two fumbles almost cost Texas the game, but his career number's the best, and his season number's not too shabby. 2,124 yards in 98, fifth best ever in one season, but for a career, Ricky Williams is number one. I looked up on the scoreboard, I needed 11 yards to go. I ran an ISO to the left, and I won the game, because, I mean, it got kind of kind of close at the end, and the fact, you know, the team came back and won the game. Well, a quick comparison now between Williams and the man who held the record, Tony Dorsett, or Dorsett when he had the record. Ricky had more yards on fewer carries, but Dorsett also had more yards per game. Ricky also had more touchdowns, but the man called Hawkeye from Alquippa does have one thing Ricky won't have, and that's a national championship. Pac-10 battle now. Great game. Arizona and Arizona State. Pick it up second quarter. 